Hi everyone, in this tutorial video I'm going to be showing you how you can customize your own realistic metal material from the appearance editor. On the screen right now you can see a number of visually stunning examples of a sample arm guard from our assassins pack. With the metal customization options in character creator, you can completely create and customize every little aspect of your own metal using parameters like abrasion, blemishes and more. First I'm going to import a character model FBX. This model has an entire character with an arm guard already attached to the forearm. Whereas most accessories do not contain any skinning data to your character model's skin mesh, this arm guard has been skinned to the character already. Therefore, when you import, you may get an error message that the mesh is bound to the wrong bones. Once I press OK, you'll see the character model then import with some base clothing and the arm guard, which has been given a white material color for now. It has a UV map, but currently no textures. You can press the F key to focus on any selected item like I've done here. What I'm going to do now is go over and choose the embedded PBR3 material substance. Once I do that, I'll then load up the appearance editor. You can see that a message prompt will pop up mentioning that the textures on the object are flattened images, and that the current textures will be discarded in order to edit with the appearance editor. I'll select OK and then the previous textures I assigned will then be replaced with the default cloth texture. So when it loads up, you'll just see a bunch of default material values assigned to the arm guard. Don't worry about that, we'll be changing it soon. Before I move on to activating the material generator, however, I'm going to switch the output size to 1024 by 1024 in order to achieve a reasonable visual quality when I'm editing my metal properties. Next, I'm going to go into the material base, and you can see the material type is assigned as embed, fabric, while the fabric type is currently assigned as denim. Obviously, we don't want this, so let's switch these out. I'm going to choose the embed metallic material type, and you can see it will switch to the chainmail option automatically. You can also assign the input channel here if you have textures with your own generated mesh data. The chainmail looks pretty sweet, and if we want to change the number of chain links on our mail, we can go into the scale parameter in the transform section. Notice if I put it up to 2, the links will become larger. There are also other types of embedded metals as well. The dotted option shows a nice metal with small raised bumps in a uniform pattern across the arm guard. Next, there is a faceted embed metal substance that consists of a combination of larger, flatter surfaces, almost as if the metal has been roughly pounded into shape by a hammer. The plated mail option is more representative of a knight's medieval armor, with metal plates attached together for flexibility and protection. The scale metal option looks like it also would go fantastic on a medieval knight, almost like dragon scales. There's also a pure gold option, which gives you the appearance of a nice, smooth golden surface. What I'm going to do now is go into the Mesh Data section to add my own design to the surface. It's very important to prepare and bake these critical maps in a software such as 3D Coat, Substance Painter, or ZBrush, as they are crucial elements for procedural effect generation. Make sure that Use Input is on, and then let's first load in the Height Map, which in this case is a neutral gray. When I load in the normal map, you'll be able to see the crest emerge on the surface of the arm guard. From there, I'll load in the World Space Normal. Although you can't see the effect yet, it can be useful in future modifications for things like dust effects from the top to the bottom of the surface. Finally, I'll load in the ambient occlusion map, which is used to strengthen the shadow effect in the crevices. Next, let's move on to the abrasion effects. Abrasion is derived from the source height map. In this case, the height map is a pure gray map, so it's difficult to define a separate area on the surface. You'll notice this when I adjust the sharpness and area sliders, and you see no effect until extreme values. The only parameter that shows variety is the spread parameter, as it doesn't follow the normal value. It follows the height map to give the effect to the whole mesh. It's easy to paint with grayscale if you choose the height map as the derived source, but in this case I'll change the derived from value to the normal map. This will allow us to achieve a more gilded metal, or gold-plated result, where we've worn off the gold surface to reveal an iron metal underneath. Now when I adjust the spread slider, you'll see the abrasion targeted to the raised portions of the pattern according to the normal map. From here you can increase the sharpness to get a higher contrast for the abrasion in certain areas, almost like the surface plating has chipped off as opposed to fading. You can also adjust the area to provide a more faded effect to the abrasion toward the surrounding areas of those raised from the normal map. Next, let's adjust the color of the abrasion area using hue, saturation, and luminosity 
to get a much darker base metal under the exterior plating. Normal will give a slight bit of noise to the abrasion area, while the surface intensity is a bit more noticeable as you can see it strengthens the bumpiness on those areas. With the roughness slider you can make it more matte or metallic looking. A higher value here will produce more of a matte appearance. From there you can further adjust luminosity to make it appear a bit brighter. Once you've achieved a value that you're satisfied with, you can tweak the luminosity of the metallic and roughness maps to give an overall shinier appearance. For our second case, let's take a look at trying to achieve a raw cast iron effect with a darker base metal and increased roughness in the abrasion areas. So the first thing I want to do here is adjust the color and saturation to something a bit darker to achieve that raw iron effect. I can tone down the saturation a slight bit as well too. Lowering the roughness luminosity will also help the effect. Keep in mind that the area that is revealed after abrasion will be governed by the abrasion section only. Finally, let's use a brighter and simpler metal surface to show blemishes like slight oxidation in the blemish section. You can also use this to achieve rust effects as well on different metals like steel or iron. So first of all, let's enable the blemishes and right away you'll see the blemish pattern on the surface. You can use the pattern and offsets parameters here to randomize and transform the position of the blemishes on the surface at first. Scale can be used to make your blemishes larger and more spread out, or smaller and more condensed. Specs intensity can be used to increase or decrease the number of oxidation speckles on your surface, and the spec slider can make them larger or smaller. There are also three values for the streaks on your metal, which can be used in tandem to achieve different intensity and direction of the streaks across the surface. After that, there is speckling, which you can think of as a finer, more detailed specs, sort of like pores on a skin, or in this case, oxidation on the surface of the metal. Increasing that and the corresponding pattern value can go a long way to achieving a more detailed, rough surface. Finally, the normal intensity slider can be used to really exaggerate the speckles on the surface, making it look tremendously more bumpy and oxidized. So there you have it folks, you can use all these really cool embedded metal adjustment parameters to achieve all sorts of unique looks for your metals. In part 2 we'll discuss how you can achieve other details on your metals such as paint peeling, edge wear, rust, dirt and gashes.